and then oh look who it is this one is aggro kamikaze i'm about to light him up <laughs> Yeah. Alright, looks like they're. Just put it up in the air on the side. Yeah, I saw them. The left. There's yeah, they're. Oh, there's only three. Yeah. Alright, there's one behind that truck. Probably three, but. Agent down. <laughs> they're all right there. They're all right there, Charlie. Careful. I got you, I got you. Come around the corner. Oh my god. Come on, you fucking ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kamikaze go for it. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Oh, there yep, you go. Oh, there you go. The boost is being taken by allies. The boost has been taken by allies. Thanks for the carry. You won. Well done. Nah, I had to play a little hard right there. Damn. I feel like you try every single time you play against me. You're like, I'm going to beat her up so bad. I play with my toes man, when I play against you. <laughs> Yo, I turn oh, my shit. monitor off when I play against oh. you. So shut your mouth. So a lot of you guys are probably asking the question, what build was skills running during that beatdown in that conflict match? And well, that's why you guys are here. So let's get into it. So for the specialization, we are running the technician class. And the reason why is for that link laser pointer. Like if we didn't need the link laser pointer, we probably could run a lot of different other classes. But since we need to be able to keep our target spotted almost all the time, any talent that needs the enemy to be pulsed, well, this actually allows us to do that. And that's why we're running the technician class. 
We are running the Kingbreaker, probably one of my favorite ARs in the game. Even though it has a slower rate of fire, the amount of damage it puts out, to me, works out because each bullet hits hard, right? Like, even though the DPS, if you put them in the range, you put this in the range probably with the police M4, the DPS over time is around the same. But the fact is, with the Kingbreaker, you have to hit less shots or it's a shorter amount of time to get that damage out. So we are running 134,000 total damage on this build. If you notice, my expertise level is 19. In that video, it was only 18. I did finally level it up one more. And then we have assault rifle damage, health damage, and damage to targets out of cover. So perfectly God rolled one. Now this has perfect flat line. This is what I was talking about. Any talent that requires the enemy to be pulsed because it amplifies weapon damage by 20% to pulse enemies. After two kills, applies pulse to the next enemy you hit. Now, obviously for the scope, we're running a 5% crit chance mod. For the magazine size, we are running 20 rounds. We are running that link laser pointer. And then for the muzzle, we are running that 5% critical hit chance. So we're getting 10% extra critical chance just on the weapon itself. For the mask, I am running the Cheska mask. Now this gives me that 10% critical hit chance. It also gives me 15% weapon damage. And if you look right here, it gives me 13% armor, right? So actually works out really good for the build the way I have it set up. It works good, close range, long range. Some people like to put the coyote mask here, but ideally I like to make sure that my stats are always evenly throughout the whole thing. And if someone else is running the coyote mask, it will benefit me. So we have weapon damage on here, critical damage, critical chance, and a critical hit damage mod. And that's typically how I run this mask. For the chest, it's probably one of my favorite chest pieces if you're gonna run some type of spotter build closer. It has 5% total armor. We have 170,000 armor on here. We have 12% critical hit damage, 6% crit chance, and a 12% critical hit damage mod. You can see that I have 14% armor rolled on here from the expertise level. And then we also have perfect spotter, increased total weapon and skill damage by 20% to post enemies. So for the holster, we're running the Fenris holster. It gives us 10% assault rifle damage. We have 15% weapon damage, 12% critical damage, and 6% critical hit chance. Now we do have 13% level expertise level on here for that extra armor. So all the pieces I have been able to level them up little by little. For the knee pads, we're in the Fox pair knee pads for that multiplicate damage of the 8% damage to is out of cover. On this build, we'll have a total of 18% with this and the weapon. We have weapon damage, we have 8% damage to out of cover, and then that 12% critical damage with 14% armor from the expertise. For the contracted gloves, we got this for the multiplicative again for the 8% damage to armor. We have 170,000 armor rolled in here, so our second piece of armor, that's putting us at 1.3 million armor, and we have 12% critical damage. And then for the backpack, we have the Grubo Soma backpack for the weapon damage, the 15% critical damage for the one piece. We have 13% armor from the expertise. We have 12% critical damage, 6% critical chance, and 12% critical hit damage mod. Now we have vigilance, increased total weapon damage by 25%. Now, when you're taking damage, it does disable this buff for four seconds. So ideally, if you can get those shots off first, you tend to win those battles because vigilance will be proxed. Or if you can have it proxed when you go into battle, definitely will help out when you guys are fighting. Now, we look at the stats, you'll see the base damage for weapon damage, 134,000. The PVP weapon damage is 53,000. We have 54% critical hit chance, 168% critical hit damage, 75% headshot damage, 8% armor damage. 21% health damage, then we have that 18% multiplicative of damage targets out of cover. And that's why with this build, we are shredding enemies. And you saw there was no need to have any more damage on this build with 1.3 million. You are still going to shred almost anybody. And it, it just hits really hard. You guys saw put up 15 kills, was definitely destroying everybody in shots. And, and that's why this has been one of my favorite conflict builds. Typically what you kind of see with me, me running or var variations of this in conflict. But yeah, this is my go-to right here. So if you have any questions on how I have this build set up, well, let me know and I can tell you different ways that you might be able to tweak it for your play style or in group play. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Appreciate the support, appreciate the love. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, nothing but skills out.